<laughs> so uh, you pulled this article up, and it's kind of funny because the article, uh, it was also not just in the U.S. Uh, U.S. News. U.S. News. It was in Reuters. It was in Yahoo. I saw it on Yahoo first as well. Mm -hmm. And it says exclusive FBI finds scant evidence of U.S. Capitol attack was coordinated sources, <laughs> meaning there was scant evidence. Right. Which is not really a solid case you want to take to court. <laughs> Say, hey, yo, by the way, we got connections. But isn't uh, this what we, we said that the, it was coordinated, but we were talking about it being like a PSYOP, like, you know, Cointel Pro. It's been the word of the day today. People getting involved and, and you know, they did trace the military, several military officials and some, several people involved in, in intelligence who were happened to be there happen and of course we saw how it happened sure at the front uh there was some you know you could say there was like violent altercations but people were let in they were walking around like it was a tour that also happened and yeah. they're still trying to talk about it like it was this whole stay like, within the ropes please like this whole like insurrection right that's why it's in quotes insurrection yeah, I, I think when we had the interview uh, with the, what is it, the World Journalist um, Association? World Socialist website? Yeah, yeah, they were saying, <laughs> oh, this was a planned attack and blah, blah, blah. And no, it really wasn't. It looked like it was, from what we could guess, or my personal opinion too as well, I'll just speak for myself, is that it it seemed like they were trying to set stuff off. Like there were instigators that were trying to really make it something big mm -hmm. and hopefully that the crowd would follow behind i even said at one point look at that crowd behind them they better be careful because this crowd might move up well guess what they didn't they stayed back they didn't go there so even though you know and let me also say this too as well because i want to peel off for one second because this is happening this is this is the political tennis that's being played and Johnny can speak of this. Fiorella can speak of this. I've heard four speak about this. They try to make it on Fox News like all the Black Lives Matter protests yeah. are awful. Like they're burning down the cities down to uh, uh, bloody ashes and that people are getting hurt and murdered and whatnot. And you can't deny that there have been places that have been burnt and people have been injured. But for the most part, they're peaceful protests. They really are. And I'm not saying that this is peaceful protest at all, but when you start playing political tennis right. and you try to demonize both sides, either side, now you're just going back and forth. Right. Even if I yeah. agree with the ideology of BLM more, there's a lot of hypocrisy, too, on, on the liberal side about this whole thing. Because if it had been Bernie Sanders telling people to go to the Capitol and, and fight for the results, the left would have loved it. In 2016, that's what we wanted him to do. Um, so I always go back to that. And I just wanted to read a, a paragraph from this article. They said, though federal officials have arrested more than 570 alleged participants, the FBI at this point believes the violence was not centrally coordinated by far right groups or prominent supporters of then President Donald Trump, according to the sources who have been either directly involved or briefed regularly on the wide ranging investigations. 90 to 95 percent of these are one off cases, said a former senior law enforcement official with knowledge of the investigation. Then you have 5 percent maybe of these militia groups that were more closely organized. But there was no grand scheme with Roger Stone and Alex Jones and all these people to storm the Capitol and take hostages, which is literally what they've been claiming for the last fucking yeah. I don't know how many months now like eight months yeah. like nine months it's been it's ridiculous like this is this and they have what did they do on the behalf they created this whole idea of domestic violent extremists and now the Department of Homeland Security has added any sort of questioning of not of elections and, and, the, and the 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 COVID and all these other things to it right yeah. so now it's like now it's too late it's yeah. too late now you have you have people whose rights have been eradicated meaning ours because now people like steven could get arrested for merely being a journalist and people the water protectors they can get eight years like one just got yeah for the dakota access pipeline and so it this is now going to be worse and we told you it would be from the yeah. start because it was never about crucifying the right it was about using them as bait to get everybody else yeah and, and the worst thing i think that can come of this stuff is when we play into this political football game is that it's this allows the intelligence apparatus to to 
even take away more of our civil liberties. We have less freedoms now. Now they can track us on every single thing. Look at all our bank statements. In fact, and that's how they were catching a lot of uh, people that were there on January 6th is the bank was giving over information of them using the ATMs and stuff. So once you give that inch, they take a foot. And guess what? Once they take away those civil liberties, they never give them back. And that's the, that's the, the very damaging thing of this particular January 6th situation. I'm not saying that people shouldn't pay a price who went in there, who did things. You know, treat everybody uh, on their own particular merits, but to try to make this big whole, oh, this was a cabal going on. A they coup. Were, yeah, a coup. I mean, come on, guys. Like Comparing it to the Taliban. Stop it. <laughs> stop, just stop it. And once again, we don't agree so with a lot stupid. of these people's ideology, no. but to think that this was a, a, some type of coup or real insurrection, it's just mind-blowing. It was not. Okay? Yeah. Um, okay. Also, though, fam, the fact is, did you have anything to say about that article? Because I want to say because no. no matter what, they have to still keep the narrative going. So right. the FBI is still seeking information regarding people who committed violence at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. Visit go.usa, uh, hashtag <laughs> I'm a snitch, to see photos and videos from current cases. And if you recognize someone, submit a tip. Tips for the FBI.com. Yes, and there was a lot of during that time when emotions were heightened. You saw, we, you saw how people attacked us. You saw all, all these people, you know, yelling, saying, "Oh, you're protecting these people." You're da 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 da. Like when we were just simply stating what we now know to be true that it wasn't this whole like plan thing by these uh, Trumpers, right? If anything, you know, this is has been weaponized by the state agencies, right? Uh, and you have this tweet here. Well, then you got, you know, the political football, everybody go back and forth, whatnot. Raise your hand if you want this plane landing in your town. Uh, America paid oh God. unimaginable cost in Afghanistan because of an uniparty globalist who dominated the Bush and Obama administrations no more. And then you have Laura Schwartz making a comment on January 6th. This landed in my town. I'm confident refugees from Afghanistan would show greater respect for the rule of law. So now here you go. Wow. Demonizing both sides, <laughs> the Republicans. Hey, okay, the so right this right winger probably, right, needs to understand that they it, the, the this all started with the Mujahideen. Right. With in the seven, late 70s. Yeah. Like when when we completely over helped overthrow their like leftist government, their socialist government and created the Mujahideen or you know, ushered in the Mujahideen, which then became the Taliban. And so that's, that's, it's on the entire like American system, yeah. the entire uh, yeah. agencies and military industrial complex, which includes both Republicans and Democrats. It's not one or the other. I just, I was going to say, you want to bet Steve Cortez would love Ronald He's Reagan? Max. Right? Yeah. Want to bet that he would love Ronald Reagan? Well, Ronald Reagan threw the Maltov cocktail. He's Hispanic. He threw the Maltov cocktail on the whole Mujahideen situation and whatnot after Carter got out. <laughs> Reagan just amped up the Stinger yep. missiles and whatnot. And these were some of the most fanatical people out there. They, yep. You know, these people were known for throwing, you know, uh, acid on yep, like on women's women. faces mm -hmm. and shit. And you we know, were and supporting them at that and, point. Yes, That's because the they thing. were killing Russians. Exactly. And we didn't want the Russians because yeah. of communism. And so then Laura Schwartz. To Laura Schwartz, I say, when the hell have you cared about refugees before now before now where it's politically in your face this has been going on for over 20 years and none of these people gave two shits about uh, afghanistan yeah. like they did it and so now all these liberals are coming out of the woodworks acting like oh we must accept refugees we must do this of course we fucking created this the same way we created the regime change wars in latin america which we should also accept those refugees because we created these regime change wars you want to stop immigrants from coming in to the right Stop creating fucking refugees. End of story. The best way yeah. to help women in Afghanistan is to stop fucking bombing them. Yeah. The best way to help anybody is to stop sanctioning them. Yeah. That's the end of story. Stop That's it. Stop playing political games yeah. of, ooh, I'm going to appeal to the right. I'm going to appeal to the left and their emotions. This is just, I'm just so sick and tired of the political football that they play. And it's not just politicians. Now it's like these pundits and all of these, these propagandists and these people that buy into that and continue just having this team blue and team red and yeah. nothing fucking changes. Yeah. Not one fucking thing. When Obama was selling the surge in 2008, I think it was, it was a 2009. Nobody was saying anything, pushing them back because surge sounds so sexy. We're going to surge. Yeah. What, what do you mean surge? That means more yeah. deaths, more bombing, more killing. He upped the troop level. And for all these people out there right now, some of the shit libs out there, I'm so sorry, or people who just think, oh my God, what are we doing? We're leaving these people behind. It's awful. At the end of the day, we did we should have never been in there, and we can't stay there. We have 
to get out. And I don't even think we're getting out. I think we're just privatizing the war more. Yeah. I'm going to have a lot more mercenaries there anyways what, whatsoever. But we cannot stay there. Do you really think American soldiers there are like Captain America fighting and saying, you know, stop, help the women? No, they're killing people left and right over there. Why do you think the Taliban was so easily able to take over when the Americans left? Because they want the Americans out. So stop thinking of it as like it's a peace meet emission or something like that. Yeah, American <laughs> troops equal more death. And it's the worst kind of death because it's on their land. Yeah. Uh, justice for Ashley Babbitt says Michael Burks and Keith Olbermann's disgusting ass. She got it on January 6th. How come this asshole hasn't been fucking pulled yeah. from Twitter or YouTube right. or anywhere else and whatnot? This guy has become a disgusting son of a bitch. I think it's all an act. I mean, he's he's a propagandist. He gets paid good money to be to be that person, right? I mean, it's disgusting. Uh, he I, was never there before. Um, you have Hakeem Jeffries taking his jacket off, fam. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like these guys are such phonies and stuff. Listen to <laughs> he goes. If seditionists, Trump seditionists are coming in here, I'm gonna take my jacket oh off. Oh my god! <laughs> Get ready. They love to play the part. Jesus these guys. Christ. I didn't even know there was gas mask underneath my seats and stuff. They said, "Get your gas mask ready." And I'm like, "Why well, ain't going down without a fight? Let's take my jacket off and go." <laughs> it's just I had to. They're so. They're, this is they're all so theater. melodramatic. This is but this is what she talked about. She yeah. said this is all theater, right? This is all this is all they do. It's theater. This is why maybe we recognize it because we know theater. <laughs> theater. <laughs> um, so Glenn Greenwald pretty much sets the record straight. The FBI has found scant evidence that on January sixth attack the U.S. Capitol was a result of an organized plot to overturn a uh, plot to overturn the presidential election and results. Uh, and he says the FBI at this point believes the violence was not. Uh, yeah, well, we centrally think. coordinated by far right groups mm -hmm. or prominent supporters of Donald Trump. The only thing more deranged than claiming Russia had taken over control of the U.S. through blackmail is calling January 6th an insurrection. Yeah, and that is point. just, I, I share your feelings, Glenn. I'm glad mm -hmm. that you always can speak my mind. You find the words for me. Um, because it is really, it, it's just really crazy sad that we, people are buying into this because they're just using this, like I said, to merit themselves, giving more laws to the security state and taking away more of our freedoms. By sooner or later, we'll have zero freedoms whatsoever. Yeah, that's what's They'll be happening. following, a voice will be telling us in the bathroom to not use too much toilet paper or something, whatnot. Or stuff. they'll tell uh, us we can't use the words based or ah, cocked. Or normies. Ah. I mean, this is hilarious right here. This scares the shit out. I mean, who, who do, these, do these people really believe them fucking <laughs> themselves when they say this shit? Has this woman gone out of her house in like 10 years? It's just weird because we have like, you I based. feel like our group is like, uses all these words. I use like cucked. our fam. Like uh, they do. It's just funny. Like, are they like, they? Li it's like they watch the combo couch or something. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. But I, is she, she, how does this woman take herself serious? Check this video out. Can parents look out for maybe language that they use, young, their young sons might be using, or behaviour that they might have? Yes, they can. So there are lots of bits of language that might be red flags referring to people as normies or as triggered. Normies is the word incels use for people outside their community. Uh, triggered, based, cucked, describing being red-pilled or black-pilled, which are words they use yeah. to describe being infiltrated into the ideology. Yeah. And it's worth saying as well that they see this as a kind of conduit to other forms of extremism. It isn't completely separate from far white, white nationalist, white supremacist mm. movements. They actually really see it as a slipway. So parents might see a combination of perhaps also racism creeping in as well. The incel community is a very racist community. This is a racist idea. Ideology. And of course, white supremacist is a deeply misogynistic ideology. Yeah. Can parents look out for? So it's I interesting because somebody <laughs> commented when I when I uh, tweeted this, they were like, so all three of my kids are are like these these uh, incels and these extremists then. Because <laughs> all like so your kids, I mean, my sister says based all the time. She must be an extremist. Uh, you know, we like it's, Cuck, it's now right? they're uh -huh. policing. Our, this is Australia, right? By the way, they're policing people's language now, right? They're policing what you say, what you don't say. And the whole normies thing. I didn't even know that was popular. I I started calling people that a long time ago. People who were outside of politics. I was always like, pasta is just so hard to like talk to people who are normies. Like to be in a relationship with somebody that's a normie because like. They're normies. Like, I say it all the time. I, I didn't ever think it was some sort of radical 
Ooh, like it's Damn, just you hilarious. Know, you, 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 you have the. I'm an the, incel now. That's it. It's seeping into your soul right now and stuff. You know, you're radicalized. You don't even know what's happening and whatnot. We're gonna have to have a conversation. Don't use the word red pill or black pill anymore. That's the other thing that uh that uh what uh, what's her face Sky Daddy uses too. All black pilled. She was saying, if you're all a black pill, this person at this show, it was just funny. I'm like, <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, and I just put this in earlier today, Johnny, because the Capitol Police found the officer who shot Ashley Babbitt uh, acted lawfully. And I believe this is Ashley Babbitt. I believe, I believe, I believe. Thought I yeah, was. this is the Ashley Babbitt. Um, let me see. Yeah, there it is. The Capitol Police said the officer involved in the shooting of Ashley Babbitt, 35, will not be facing internal discipline after its Office of Professional Responsibility determined his or her conduct was lawful. The department also said the actions of the officer who is not being identified for his or her safety potentially save members and staff from serious injury and possible death as a mob of President Trump supporters breached the U.S. Capitol and forced their way into the House chamber. We have seen that video. We played it here when this happened. That woman was like unarmed that woman was like everybody else there she wasn't even at the very front she was shot point blank murdered executed i stand against police violence period period end of story i do not care who does it she did not deserve to die they could have arrested her just like they arrested everybody else it wouldn't have changed a goddamn thing the way they're getting away with this now is the same way they get away with shooting unarmed people of color. You may not like her beliefs. It's still wrong. And the fact that so many people called me uh, white supremacist adjacent for saying that this is wrong is disgusting. So many people who tout themselves as progressives and say, oh, these, these white supremacists, they wouldn't, they, in one second, they'd be willing to allow police violence just because they disagree with somebody's ideology and that's that's what i have a problem with as much as i disagree with ashley babbitt's ideology i still think it was wrong for her to have died that way if you want to have a trial for her and crucify her in another way sure by all means do that but the way she was murdered was unacceptable and i think it's wrong and i'm, I'm not gonna change my mind on that i think it's wrong because it's going to allow once again Oh, you didn't care about Ashley Babbitt getting shot. But the next time somebody else shoots a, a black man or a Latino man or a, a poor person you, and it's on your ideology, you're going to be pissed and they're going to say you didn't care about Ashley Babbitt. You see, if you're not consistent in your point of view, then shit like that happens and nothing fucking changes. I was waiting for Joe Biden to come saying like he should have shot her in the leg, but he didn't come by and say that. No, not no, even. Not even. So.